You're now pretty well versed in the basics of building an Ubraco website. In the next couple of chapters, I'm going to introduce you to some of the more advanced features, all of which increase the flexibility for both you and the content editors who will be working with content on your site. The first of these I'll introduce you to is collections and queries. In this video, we'll be setting up a blog section for our website. Let's start by taking a look at how the blog area looks on the custom template we're using in this tutorial. The top part here looks pretty much like the pages we've already created, so we should be using the master template. All right. And down here, first there's a featured blog post here at the top. And if we go down a bit, there's a collection here of the latest blog posts. And this is what we're going to be creating in this video. For it, we'll need two new document types, which we will set up as a document type collection. We'll need two new templates. And finally, we're going to use what we call the Query Builder to iterate through all blog posts and render them out like the grid we have here. Great! Now that you know the lay of the land, time to get this set up. We'll start in the back office of our website, over here, and in the settings section. We'll start by creating our collection. So we will right-click the Document Types folder, Create, and choose the Document Type Collection down here. So this will create two document types and templates and make sure that they are set up with a parent-child relationship. So the first one here, the parent document type, will be our blog page, so we will call it blog. And the second one down here, which we will be using to create blog posts, we will call it blog item. And we will want templates for both these document types, so we will leave these two checked. Great. Now let's hit create. And you will see that our two new document types are being set up. The first one here is our block item. We will, of course, need to add some properties to it. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at the block document type real quick. Find it over here. Yes, this one needs some properties as well, but let's take a look at the permissions tab up here first. Remember how we earlier on the homepage document type made sure that our content and contact pages were allowed as child pages? The same thing has happened here. See how the block item document type has already been configured as an allowed child here on the block document type. That's because we've set it up using the document type collection feature. It has made the relation between the two document types for us. And it has also enabled what we call a list view for this document type. This means that instead of our content tree growing really large as we add many blog posts, all pages using the blog item document type will be available in a list view under the page using the blog document type. Okay, perhaps a bit abstract now. I promise it will make a lot more sense once you see it in action. Now, before we can start building our very first query, we need to add some properties to these two new document types. We need to set up our templates, and it would also be good to have some content pages to work with. I've already shown you how to do that a bunch of times, so I'll be doing it off camera. Have a look in the description below this video to see which properties and fields I'm adding to the block section. See you in a bit. Okay, I've now set up everything we need in order to get started with building our first query. Great, first a quick look at what I've done. Here you can see I've added the title box composition to the block document type. And I've added a single property as well to allow the selection of a featured blog post to be shown on the page. Okay, and then the blog item document type here. Again, I've added the title box composition. Then I've added a group of various metadata, like information about the author, some images, categories. And finally, down here, a content group for the main content of the blog post. All right, let's check out the content section. I've added the blog page down here under the home page. Now what we see over here is the list view I mentioned earlier. Instead of the blog posts being nested under the node over here in the tree, they're listed right here. Currently in a grid, but can easily be changed to a list from the button up here. So as you can see, I've created a few blog posts already. And if we take a look at the content tab up here, I've also set a featured blog post. All right, let's take a quick look at one of the blog posts. Let's check this one. And you can see all the fields are filled in nicely. 
Great. So how about the front end? Well, let's head over and have a look. So this is how our blog page currently looks. We have the featured blog post up here and the collection of blog posts down here. But this grid down here is still just static HTML, which does not yet render our blog posts. It's time to do something about that. Let's build a query so we can render our blog posts right here. So to the back office, in the settings section. Now down here in the templates folder, you'll see that I've nested both the blog and the blog item template under the master template. On both templates, I've taken the HTML structure from the custom template, copied it and made sure that all properties are rendering out in the right places. Great. All we need now is to add a query to the block template. So there will be a comment down here indicating where to add the query. Here it is. Block post query goes here. So we'll put our cursor here, add a few lines, and then we'll click the query builder button up here. This opens a dialog, and this is where we need to filter on our content pages using the block item document type. So up here, we'll say, I want content of type block item from, and we want to go with our block page here. There we go. So this means that we only want pages using the block item document type and are nested under the block page. Then we can specify even further by filtering by date, ID or other things. And we can choose how the items should be ordered. For now though, I won't configure any of those. Now finally below here, you will notice that Umbraquot tells us exactly which items will be returned from the query we just configured. Looks like we've done it correctly as these are the three blog posts we have on the site. Sweet. And below here is the actual query. Now let's submit to add this to our blog template. Great, I will just move this in a bit. So you will notice that along with the query up here, a for each statement is also added. This is what will iterate through all the items that's found in the query. So the default here is using an unordered list, but we want to use the HTML from our custom template in order for it to look pretty. So instead of the UL tag up here, we want our row division from down here. So I will grab that and paste it in here instead. And we will close it down here as well. All right. Then instead of the list item here, we want to grab the call division from down here. I already have the snippet we need ready. So let me just go ahead and paste that in. So what's happening here? The first line up here ensures that we can get the image we need from the thumbnail image field. Then down here below, we're adding a link tag with a link to the blog post. Then down here, our image is posted. And below, the page title property. Now, previously, when we've built templates, we've used model.value. Here, item.value is used instead. Now, that's because we're inside a for each query, iterating through all the items found in the selection, which is our query up here. All right, now we just need to clean this template up a bit as we can get rid of all these static blog posts down here. Get rid of that, delete, and clean this up a bit more. Here we go. All right, let's save the template and head on over to the front end and see how it looks. So let's refresh. Ah, there we go. Now we're rendering our blog posts here in the latest stories section. And if we click on one of them, it acts as a link to the actual blog post in here. So now we're, we're starting to add even more flexibility to our website. In the next video, we'll be covering some more advanced properties to add some more flexibility and functionality to our website. And that was it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.